Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks so much for listening. To all who've been celebrating, I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas this year. I absolutely adore the festive season, and I think it's important that we cherish opportunities to show loved ones that we care, and to be thankful for what we have in our lives, whether that's at Christmas or any other time of the year. And I want to remind you that I am grateful for you. Wherever you are, and however you might feel about this time of year, just know that you are loved and appreciated, and your presence in this world is in itself the greatest gift there could be. Tonight, we'll be taking a trip to Arctic Finland for a special wintry retreat. There are lots of magical moments in store for us there, and I know you'll really enjoy. Don't worry if you drift off to sleep at any time during this story, though. You can always come back and listen again another time. Before we get there, I just wanted to say a brief thank you to everyone who helped us during our supporters drive this past month. Whether you signed up to get Sleepy Premium, or you simply expressed your gratitude and appreciation for the show, it meant such a lot to all of us on the team. We rely on that support to keep the show going, so just know that anything you can do to spread the word about Get Sleepy is meaningful and significant. So thanks again, sleepyheads. Now then, get yourself settled in and nice and comfortable wherever you are. If you'd like to close your eyes, now is a good time to do that. Gently use your other senses to explore your environment. Notice how the covers are settling down over your body and how they feel on your skin. Are they cool and refreshing or snug and warm? Use your ears to really zone in on my voice, and you may find that that in itself summons feelings of comfort and familiarity, particularly if you've been listening to the show for some time already. Take a long, deep breath, enjoying the air as it enters your nose and mouth, and then let it out with a sigh, feeling the shoulders dip and the neck and facial muscles relax. Repeat that slow, controlled breath in, and enjoy the sensation of release as you let the air flow back out. Gradually, allow your breathing to return to normal as your body and mind move closer to sleep. And now, we'll travel to a beautiful landscape covered in snow and ice, where our story begins. The smell of firewood 
lingers in the air. It mixes magically with the aroma of chocolate and coffee and creates the perfect mood with the snow falling outside. You clutch a mug of hot chocolate between both hands. You can feel the warmth of the drink sinking into your skin, sending a warming sensation through your body. You bring the hot chocolate up to your nose and breathe in the sweet, slightly minty aroma. You're sitting in a quaint coffee shop in northern Finland. This special region is called Sapmi, or Lapland, and it's covered in snow for more than half the year. It's located above the Arctic Circle, after all. These wintry months make it a unique place, and the life and culture here are fully intertwined with the long nights and snowy weather. The coffee shop is set inside of a traditional hut resembling a log cabin. However, it has a more triangular shape and features a large stone fire pit in the middle of the room. Polished wooden picnic-style tables also dot the cafe's interior. The place is perfectly warm enough for a turtleneck jumper but your long winter coat hangs on a wooden rack across the room. You can hear the sounds of mugs clinking together as a woman washes dishes behind the counter. Around you are locals and other visitors to this wondrous region of Finland. You hear a mixture of languages, from English and Finnish to Russian and Spanish. Dim yellow lights create a moody, rustic atmosphere in this place. They are situated on metal fixtures that are sprinkled evenly around the room. Outside, it is already getting dark. Days are short here. However, you can still see some colour in the sky as you look out at the wintry scene. Fresh snow is falling, almost in slow motion, onto a thick blanket already covering the ground. In the distance, you can see other shops and homes in the village. You can even make out the cabin where you will be spending the night. All of the buildings have the same soft, yellow-tinted lights, and the colour creates a beautiful glow against the snow. Snow-covered trees are also scattered around the village. This scene looks so magical that you want to capture a memory of it. You unzip your backpack and rustle through a set of gloves, a journal, and even a pair of ice skates. They sit at the bottom of your bag secured safely. You touch one of the laces and remember how excited you are about the rest of your day. Soon, you find your phone. It feels cold to the touch. 
you open your camera app and shift your body towards the window. You hold up your phone as you tap the screen to adjust the focus. Then, you proceed to snap a few photos before bringing it back down. You admire the last photograph until the screen light fades. Then, you promptly turn off the phone and place it into your backpack. The zipping sound of the bag mingles with the crackling of firewood next to you. Now, you turn your gaze to the table and pick up the ceramic mug of hot chocolate. You bring it up to your nose and breathe in softly before taking a sip. You hold the warm cup for a while, sipping it every so often as you admire the scenery, both inside and out. Soon your mug is empty, and you place it back down on the wooden table. You then gather your backpack and scoot off of the wooden bench you've been sitting on. You smile and wave goodbye to your server as you gently remove your coat from the rack. Soon, you reach the curved door that leads out onto a small, front-facing patio. As you grab the handle, you can feel the chill of winter embrace you. You open the door and feel the cold sensation move over your body, but just for a moment. Your layers and thick coat are ready for even the coldest of days. Before heading off, you take a seat on a bench adjacent to the door. The spot is under the roof and free from snowfall. You unzip your backpack and pull out a pair of warm, woolly gloves. You slide them on one by one and adjust the finger sections until they feel perfectly snug on each hand. Now you are ready, you think. As you stand back up, you let out a deep breath. You can see the warmth of it lingering in the air for a few moments before it fades away. You have rented a kick sled for the duration of your trip. It's one of the best ways to get around these snow-filled and unsalted roads. Your kick sled is mostly made of wood. It has a chair mounted onto a pair of metal runners, almost like a set of skis. At the top, there are sturdy handlebars. Before entering the cafe, you left your sled just to the right of the building. You hear the soft sound of snow crumbling beneath your feet with each and every step. The kick sled is just how you left it but with a bit of snow stacked up on the chair and handlebars. At this moment, a local man walks by. He tells you that there is a snow scraper just inside the shed 
next to you. You look over and notice the small outbuilding with a long door and quaint triangular roof, much like the cafe itself. Smiling, you thank him for his kindness. With a quick and strong tug, you're able to get the old door open. Pieces of ice had formed in the open spaces of the door, holding it shut. Before long, you notice the snow scraper and pull it out from behind a large rake. You then brush off the snow from the chair and handlebars of your kick sled. Then, you place the scraper back where you found it and push the door firmly to secure it. Now, you are almost ready to ride towards the forest, you think. You carefully stow your backpack in the chair of the kick sled, ensuring it will stay put. Then, you step onto the kick sled, one foot at a time. You softly push off with the right foot, and then your left. Once you feel like your feet are in a comfortable position, you place your gloved hands onto the sled's handlebars. You imagine for a moment how cold they would feel without your woolly gloves protecting you. You then remove your dominant foot from the sled and push yourself and the kick sled forward with a strong step into the blanket of snow. Bits of sparkly flakes fly up like fireworks as you do this. Before you know it, you are on your way, navigating down the straight, snowy street of this arctic village. You take turns between gliding through the snow and kicking your foot against the ground to restore your speed. You continue to do this, passing village cabins and pedestrians along the way. In the distance, you can see the soft, pale colors of the sunset light shades of pink intermingle with the delicate blue of the sky. The colors darken as the moments pass. The sun sets early above the Arctic Circle at this time of year. The people here are used to the dark days and rare sunlight they have learned to embrace it. That is why coziness, candles, and fireplace-lit cafes are common here. Soon, you pass by the man you spoke with just a few moments ago. He can probably hear you coming, thanks to the rhythmic whooshing sound of your sled against the snow. You wave and exchange greetings without slowing your speed. Tiny snowflakes tap your nose and cheeks as you navigate down the road. You feel happy in this moment, like you belong here. There is nowhere else you would rather be right now, you believe.
As you kick out your foot again, a few children zoom past you on their own kick sleds. You feel a cold wind envelop you as they soar by. You look out at them and see two young boys standing up on the sleds. They are bundled up in warm winter gear, woolly scarves and all, and another child sits in one of the chairs on the kick sled. Her mitten-covered hands rest on her lap, and she is wearing a white knitted beanie. Pieces of her hair dance in the wind as the group ventures further down the street. After a few more minutes of riding, you leisurely make a right-hand turn. As you come around the corner, a true winter wonderland makes itself known. You can see the lake covered in thick ice. Surrounding much of the lake are pine trees, magically dusted in snow. You can already smell the aroma of fresh pine in the air. It entices your senses. It is one of your favorite wintry smells. A bit of peppermint, a dash of pine, and lots of warm spices really embody the winter season to you. The sun has almost completely set, and you can see stars beginning to pop up in the dark blue sky. A few lampposts flicker on in response to the darkening day. You can hear a faint clicking sound as the lights turn on. It looks like the perfect scene for ice skating, you think to yourself. Once you are close enough, you come to a stop, letting out a little sigh after your leisurely ride down the street. You look forward and admire the snow-covered pine trees that meet the frozen lake and blissfully snowy terrain for a few more moments. A sturdy-looking log catches your eye. It's laying flat on a blanket of snow, providing a beautiful contrast with its dark brown color. You pull your sled over to the log and press it firmly into the snow. Next, you glance down at your hands. Starting with your right hand, you use your left to pull at the glove's fingertips before carefully sliding it off and slipping it into your coat pocket. You repeat the same motions with the left glove, feeling the soft, woolen knits between your fingertips. You then bend forward and unzip your bag. You push some things to the side until you are able to take out your pair of ice skates. They clink and bump against each other as you pull them out of the backpack. The blades have a protective cover on them, so you carefully pull them off of each shoe. As you do this, you feel the chill of the metal ice skates against your bare hands. 
you drop the covers into your bag and leave it unzipped. Currently, you are wearing snuggly snow boots. They have kept your toes and feet warm for the duration of your trip, and you're almost hesitant to take them off in this cold weather. Nonetheless, you scoot your backpack over and take a seat on the chair of the kick sled. You prop up your right foot on the log to get closer to your boot. Then you unlace your shoe and slide your foot out, feeling the thick fleece lining of the inside of the boot. You gently drop the boot onto the snow and then slide your foot into the ice skate. You wrap the laces around your hands and pull tightly to secure the skate onto your foot. Now you carefully tie a sturdy and tight knot and wiggle your foot to make sure the fit is perfect. You bring your right foot off the log and then quickly repeat the motions again with your left. Once both of the skates are securely on, you feel a tingling, butterfly-like sensation in your stomach. Luckily, it is finally time to take to the icy lake. Before you prop yourself up, you grab each of your gloves out of your coat pockets and place them back on your hands. You can instantly feel your skin warming up to a cozy temperature once more. Now you are ready, you decide. You stand up and take a couple of steps towards the frozen lake. The snow crunches under your skates. Before you know it, you are on the ice. Your body is moving in an almost magical way. You haven't ice skated in a while, but the muscle memory kicks in. Soon, you feel like you're performing a special dance as you glide across the lake. The blades hiss and grind, creating a beautiful sound as you swirl around the thick, freezing ice. You feel so happy and carefree in this moment. It's just you and the natural beauty of Arctic Finland all around. You find yourself spinning in circles most joyously. You smile and chuckle as you look up at the sky, feeling thankful for this special life. As you do this, a large snowflake falls onto the tip of your nose. This makes you giggle even more. you feel like this day couldn't get any better. You continue to skate, allowing the sensational feeling of freedom to consume you. As you glide, you play around with different ice skating tricks, 
like turning around and skating backwards. It takes you a moment to get the hang of it, but once you are in the swing of things, it feels completely natural. You sway your hips back and forth, zigzagging across the lake as you skate backward. After a few minutes, you turn around. And as you do this, you can feel the crisp air surrounding you. The temperatures have dropped since the sun set. This makes you think about the moon. You slow down and look up at the sky again, searching for it. There it is, you whisper to yourself. It's a thin crescent moon, but it still shines brightly in the night sky. Near it, you notice Venus. You remember it's the planet because it looks like a star, but doesn't twinkle. Instead, maintaining a smooth glow. As you admire the seemingly tiny details of the constellations, you notice something peculiar. It's as though a fog is appearing in the sky. You squint to get a better look. Then, you let out a small, joyful gasp as the colors deepen into a mesmerizing bright green. You realize you are witnessing the northern lights or the aurora borealis. The green lights sway back and forth in the star-dotted sky, almost mimicking the way that you've been skating. The lights continue to shimmer. One section is a bright, almost neon green. From there, the lights extend and soften as they dance and move. But, despite the movement overhead, it feels like time has been standing still. You don't even remember if you are still skating on the ice or not. You feel like you have transcended space and time, gazing up at the beautiful sky. The otherworldly colors the lights, and the performance itself feel so close. You reach out your hand to try and touch it. And then in a fleeting moment, the lights pulse and fade away, like curtains being drawn at the end of a performance. Your body feels tingly all over as you stand in the middle of the frozen lake. You feel so alive, yet calm and serene, after seeing the spectacle of the Aurora Borealis. You've never witnessed anything like it, you think. You are so glad to have been here on this perfect day. You slowly glide around the lake one last time as your mind focuses on the natural phenomenon you just witnessed. 
Then, you make your way to the edge of the lake, closest to your belongings. You carefully step off the frozen lake as a few tiny pieces of ice shoot up from beneath your skates. Once you're back in the snow, you sit down in the kick sled. Your fuzzy boots are waiting patiently for you. You bend down and untie each of your ice skates and pull them off one by one. You set them aside, slipping on your boots and lacing them up comfortably, too. Then, you stand up and turn around, brushing off any excess snow that fell on your shoulders while you skated. As you pick up your skates, you feel the weight of them in one of your hands as you dig out the protective covers for the blades with the other. You gently push the covers onto each of the blades and plop them into the bag. Letting out a contented sigh, you zip up your backpack one last time. Now, you pull your kick sled back onto the main path and prepare for the short return ride to the center of the village. Back on the kick sled, you speed along the snow-covered path. Some locals and visitors are still out enjoying the evening. You notice they all have a similar, happy glow about them. You imagine yours is the same. As you sled past a group, you hear them talking about the northern lights. You smile, thinking about the extra special view you experienced from the secluded lake. Soon, you arrive at your cabin and park your sled next to some others. There's no need to lock it up or secure it in any way. This is a safe and trustworthy place. There are a couple of stairs that lead up to the cabin. You softly kick the front of your boots against them, knocking off clumps of snow along the way. Once you are at the door, you scrape your feet against the snowflaked patterned doormat and turn the knob to enter. The small cabin has a main area where a few guests can gather around the fireplace. You look over at the crackling fire and spot a couple sitting close to one another, holding steaming mugs of some warm drink. The steam billows up while a woman takes a sip. As the door closes behind you, she turns your way and smiles before gazing once again at the fireplace. Heading down the hallway, you hear the creaking of the wooden floorboards beneath your feet. Soon, you reach your room. It's a cozy bedroom with a large bed and rustic decor. A small pine tree sits in the corner, 
sending its lovely scent into the air. You slip off your boots and flick on a string of fairy lights on the wall by your bed that creates a welcoming mood. Across from your bed is a window. You walk over and pull open the curtains, closing your eyes and making a hopeful wish. For a moment, you look out at the mounds of snow, and then up at the clear, star-filled sky. With a yawn, you begin to prepare yourself for bed. Soon, you're pulling back the luxuriously soft blankets and slipping yourself between layers of bed sheets, one leg at a time. You fluff your pillows and then lean across to the bedside table to flick off the fairy lights. Then, like magic, you see the northern lights through your window, glowing greens intertwine with soft whites in the sky. The lights move slowly, like they are dancing and humming along to a bedtime story. Time passes, and the lights glisten high above you. Before you know it, you can barely keep your eyes open. You blink slowly and softly as you drift into a restful slumber, dreaming about the magic of Arctic Finland and the dazzling Aurora Borealis.